Hello, my name is Izzy Lorena. Welcome back to another Mindful Motherhood Monday. Every Monday on my channel, I do a Mindful Motherhood video. It's a space for parents to talk about parenting, to discuss parenting issues, to reflect upon our parenting journeys and to be more mindful and more present in the moment with ourselves and our children. And today's topic is positive discipline. This was a topic that was requested by some of you on my Instagram and it's something that I try to practice as much as possible. I am only human and there are times when I don't practice positive discipline but I do aim to be the most positive parent I can. So I decided to talk about techniques and things that help me and I would love for you to share techniques and things that help you as well. So please comment below and share all of your positive discipline techniques and your tips and your tricks because I need them and I think a lot of people will benefit from them as well. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, I post videos three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 7pm. So please do hit the subscribe button to see more videos from me and make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and if you want to see more videos like this. And now let's get straight into the video. Positive discipline seems to be a really hot topic at the moment. Lots of teachers, educators, parenting are talking about it and it's something that I was really interested in when I had children. My childhood was a very positive childhood. My mum practiced a lot of positive discipline. She has a degree in child psychology so she was really clued up in the whole positive discipline world and that's how we were raised but it wasn't until I became a mum that I knew what it meant to be a positive discipline kind of parent. So I'm going to share just the basic concept of positive discipline. I am not qualified in any way. I'm just a mum interested in the subject and wanting to share my own experiences and my techniques in case that helps other mums out there. So the basics of positive discipline is that there are no bad children. There's good and bad behaviour. And positive discipline is a model that focuses on bringing out the good sides, the good points of behaviour. And I mentioned a little bit about this when I did a video talking about calling a child naughty and how we don't do that in our house. We don't use the word naughty because I feel like it's a way to brand the child and not the behavior. So it's all about teaching clear boundaries without the need for punishment. You don't have to be a permissive parent or a soft parent, as some people call, um, to practice positive discipline. You can be firm and assertive and respect your child's feelings and still bring out the good in their behavior. So I'm going to share a few things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis to practice positive discipline with my children. I have a two-year-old and a three-year-old and most of these things are things that I already do. Some of them are things that I have researched and added onto my list and I would love to hear from you guys if you have anything that you'd like to add to this list. So my first positive discipline technique is to give loads and loads and loads of positive attention because we know that kids, they just love attention, good or bad. If they know that they're going to get our attention, they will do it. So what we do is we try and focus a lot on positive attention. So when my children do something nice, if they are, you know, putting their toys away or really well behaved, I bake that up so much so that they feel like they want to do more of that and kind of in contrast I try to ignore minor mis misbehaviors so when they do little things that are not nice for example tipping the, the toy box completely out like all the toys out of the, the box it's not nice it's not great it's not ideal someone will have to tidy that up but that is a minor thing that I can let slide and if I give attention to that the likelihood of them doing that again is higher than if I ignore that because they they knew that 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 didn't really get an attention from mummy so it's not worth doing it again so focusing a lot on positive behavior letting the minor things slide obviously the big things you have to give it enough attention but that's one of the things that we do 
Another thing is to treat the cause and not the symptom. So if your child's behavior is off, if they're not themselves, they're acting up a little bit more, they're being a bit more tantrum-y, um, just like trying to get your attention a lot and it's coming out of nowhere, try and look for what's causing that behavior. And it won't always be obvious. You might have to observe for a few weeks to know what's causing that behavior. And I'll give a real example of something that's happening to us right now. So my daughter Isabella, who's two, she's been going through a phase of being really clingy to me to the point where you just can't breathe, you can't go to the toilet, you can't do anything without a child holding onto your legs. If you know what I mean, then you know how hard that can be. As much as I love my children, you know, to have them constantly attached to me is really hard. She's also been acting up a bit and, and throwing, a, a, you know, tantrums out of nowhere, being a bit more difficult behavior wise. And I didn't know what was causing it, but I took the time last week to kind of pay attention to her and observe her and see every time what was causing that behavior. And it made me feel really guilty and sad, but it was the fact that she was missing me time, time with mummy. I've been working really, really hard over the last couple of weeks, I'd say, you know, I've just been putting a lot more extra hours into my work and you just don't know how that's affecting your children until it does affect them. And I realized that I needed to take a step back and just spend quality time with her. I went back to look at my old pictures of James, who's my first child, and the amount of time that I spent on the floor playing with him and just spending that quality time with him individually was crazy compared to the amount of time that I spend with her and I know being a second child it's harder because I already have another child and now I have a business to run but she shouldn't suffer she shouldn't she should did that sound really wrong she shouldn't suffer because of you know life so I today I spent my entire day up until now it's now 4 40 with her dedicating all my attention to her and her behavior has been fantastic just completely top notch she's been cooperative she's been able to play on her own she's been able to um, listen to me and to just just behave well and so that led me to think that I was treating the symptom not the cause i was trying to get her to let go of me and to not be so clingy and instead by me being with her a bit more just spending that quality time it was all that she needed so that might be something to try if your child is just being a bit difficult in terms of behavior maybe look at what's causing that behavior another thing that really works for us is delayed gratification my children love knowing that good work and good behavior pays off. And they love a little reward star, they love reward charts. So something that I've been doing a lot recently, especially since my son started nursery and he's been coming home with like stickers and stars saying that he did good listening and kind hands and things like that. I've been introducing that at home as well and it makes a huge difference. So my son James really, really responds to that and I'll ask him to tidy up his toys, he won't give it a second glance. If I say to him, if you tidy up your, story, your toys, you will get a golden star for good tidying. He will do that immediately for getting that star. And I can see that it really means a lot to him to get that gratification to know that that means something instead of just, you're being told to tidy up your toys because mommy told you so. Delayed gratification is something that we do in our house. Another positive parenting technique that we use in our house is to remove shame from making mistakes. That is something that we have always done from day one and the way that we do it is we make ourselves look silly or funny if we make mistakes so that the kids feel like they can be like that as well. They can be free to make mistakes and there will be no shame in making a mistake. So, you know, if I put the wrong shoe on the wrong foot or, you know, different pairs of socks, um, the kids pick that up and they say, oh, mummy, we've got the wrong socks. And I just go, oh, silly mummy, got the wrong socks. And now they've picked up that I can make fun of my own mistakes so they can make fun of their own mistakes. And if they spill a cup of water because 
you know, they were just being a bit clumsy. It wasn't something that they were doing to get attention. It was an honest mistake. They just go, oh, silly me, I spilled the water. And they know they won't get into trouble for that. I would just tell them, you know, just to be more firm with your hands, hold it tight, you need to eat your food so that your arms get stronger so you can hold your cup really tight. Something new that I learned today whilst I was doing the research for this video is to use time out, but to make sure that it ends. So in our house, we use the thinking step. And whenever there's something behavior wise that we're not happy with, we tell them to go to the thinking step and stay there and then we'll come and talk to them. But I've never really thought about time and how much time they stay on the thinking step. And for them, what does it mean? When do they know that they're gonna get out? That's never kind of crossed my mind. I just thought that I know when they're ready. So, you know, that's all that matters. But reading up about this today made me really think that actually you, they need to know that time out ends and they need to know that they're not gonna be there forever. And, and young children don't have a very good grasp of time. The, their concept of time is not that sophisticated to know that you know when mummy's ready, um, I'll come out. So one thing that I will be introducing from now on is a little timer in, in some kind of way. I thought about an egg timer because you know it's a fixed amount, of, fixed amount of time. It's something that can be quite intriguing for them. And to say when the timer goes off, mummy's gonna come and talk to you about what you did. Until then, you stay on the thinking step so that they know that it always ends and it always ends at that same point. And then we can talk about what they did and say sorry and whatever not. But I thought that was a great idea. Another thing I think is really important is to mean what you say. So if you say no, stick to it. But you can be sensitive to your child's feelings at the same time as being assertive and sticking by what you said. I've done a video before about saying no to your kids and how important that is to them as well. So I'll leave that linked below. But in our household with two toddlers, sharing toys is something that causes a lot of friction. And that is something that I have to stick by. We don't allow snatching toys in our house. If you snatch, you've got to give it back and say sorry. But I am sensitive to the fact that my eldest, he has toys that he likes, he's got favorite toys. My youngest, not so much. She hasn't quite got like a lot of preferences, but James does, he, ha he does have like a few favorite toys. And I try to be sensitive to the fact that even if he snatches one of these toys, I will say snatching is not good, it's not okay, you've got to give it back and say sorry. And then later on when I have alone time with him, I will talk to him about it and I will say, do you know, if you want to play with that toy, because I know it's your favorite, maybe tomorrow we'll leave it in your bedroom so that you can play with it here by yourself and Bella can play with something else. So that's a way of kind of listening to their feelings and knowing that, you know, that toy means something to him, but also being firm and assertive that snatching is not okay and he can't do that even with his favorite toys. So it's something that we try to practice as much as possible. Obviously there are times when that doesn't work. <laughs> but most of the times I think I'm able to do that and kind of stick and be firm whilst still trying to be sensitive to the kids' feelings. The use of positive language is so important and it's so easy to do once you recognize what negative language is. So for example, instead of saying, don't walk in the living room with your shoes on, try and just say, take your shoes off before you go into the living room or, don't throw your clothes on the floor. Say, take your clothes to the washing basket. And if you start to change your um, the way that your brain thinks and to adapt everything into positive language, you will notice a difference in your child's behavior. I read a book called The Secret, which is very famous, when I was a teenager. And the one thing that, that stuck with me about that book was when it talked about positive language and how the universe attracts positive language instead of negative language like saying things like um i'm going to i'm going to walk on a straight line and not fall if you're going down you know like a catwalk or something and you're worried about falling instead of saying i don't want to fall i don't want to fall because that's negative language which which then attracts a negative result and i'm going off on a massive tangent but what i mean is that positive language encourages positive behavior and that works with adults and kids as well and the last thing that I do and I recommend that all parents do is to give yourself a break. 
Practicing positive discipline can be quite hard, time consuming, energy consuming, because you're training your brain to do something that's not the easy choice, that's not the easy option. Obviously, it's easier to just shout and get what you want, but to try and be reasonable and sensitive and to be a gentle, caring, loving parent all the time is hard and it can it can make you feel quite exhausted and depleted and just you know lacking in patience for anything and anyone else and everything else because you've used up all of your time and your patience and your effort to be that parent that you want to be and although we know it's worth it and it pays off being the way that we want to be as a parent it is tiring and you need to look after yourself and give yourself a break. So I find that after I've spent a whole day parenting and I'm quite proud of the way that I parented, like being quite gentle and positive with my kids, I desperately need to just either be on my own or to be with adults, people that I don't need to, to tell off or to discipline or to be a role model for. I just need a break. I just need to just like chill out. And what the one thing that really does it for me is going to the gym or exercising, doing something that I'm just like relaxing my body, my mind. So you need time for yourself. You need time to be with people who won't push your buttons and make you count to 10 and take deep breaths. You need time to gather your thoughts and you need time to miss your kids. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to share it with a friend if you think it's something that they are interested in and leave your positive discipline techniques and tips and tricks and things that work for you and your family in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you're new and I will see you all next week for another Mindful Motherhood Monday video at 7pm. Bye!